You're about to hear an inspiring story. It's about two people who transformed personal adversity into determined dedication, who refused to be bowed by the tragedies of a world war, and instead decided to help rebuild the culture from rubble. These two individuals, Donald and Charlotte McJanet, are nothing more and nothing less than teachers, teachers in the finest tradition of the profession. Here at the Tufts European Center, their work continues. Here through summer international learning programs and conferences, the free exchange of ideas, the sharing of cultures and values all take on the sanctity they deserve. The Tufts European Center is a living tribute to the two people you're about to meet, a shared tradition between those founders and Tufts University of using education to help the global community. I remember the first time I went to the Priory at Talwar and met Mr. and Mrs. Mack. On entering the Priory grounds, I was overwhelmed with a sense of history, a feeling for the many who had spent their lives here dedicated to scholarship. As I listened to the match tell hundreds of stories of students, such as Prince Philip, Indira Gandhi, whose lives they had touched, I realized this was all too precious to lose, and that Tufts University could make a difference here, could come be part of history and influence the future. Working with the late Tufts University President and Chancellor, Dr. Jean Meyer, we founded the Tufts European Center, a living tribute to the Majanet's vision. As founding director of the Tufts European Center in Talwar, I had the privilege of teaching there for four years in this rare setting. And no one leaves this place untouched, unchanged, whether they be undergraduate students, or those professionals from all over the world who came there to share ideas. At the Tufts European Center today, we continue to bring people from all nations, fostering the McJanet's belief that through understanding, world peace can be preserved. This is the McJanet's legacy. This is their story. Nearly 1,000 years ago, the Benedictines consecrated a monastery near the shores of Lake Annecy in Talwar, France. Secluded amidst the French Alps, it was a natural enclave for meditation and scholarly pursuits. True to Benedictine tradition, they built a large library and devoted much time to the study of philosophy, languages, and religion, all the while drawing inspiration from the scenic, peaceful landscape. In 1792, during the French Revolution, it all came to a violent end. Revolutionary anger against the Catholic Church raged across France, and zealots ravaged and burned the abbey. After eight centuries of solitude, the Benedictine community was destroyed. But today, the Priory's ancient stone walls once again echo with the voices of scholars. If you go all the way back to, say, the 11th century, the time of the Crusades, you realize that France was really a series of feudal states. 200 years later, the buildings and ideals once left in ruin are reborn. The ancient priory is now host to students, scholars, teachers, and thinkers from all over the world. This garden, we don't have quite the uh, genius of the Japanese to make every square in. The rebirth was the labor of Donald and Charlotte McJanet. Spending all their lives as teachers and mentors, the McJanets asked the question, what is our culture? How do we preserve it? And where do we gather to explore its shape and substance?
The McJanets transformed the ancient priory into such a place, today's Tufts European Center. Their work has made major contributions towards international peace and understanding. Many of those representatives in mission, people like Fouché. Donald McJanet once stated, this venerable house with its harmonious high ceilinged rooms, its large hall, its walled gardens, its orchard with the view over the lake and mountains is a precious tool put into our hands. Today, this house is open to groups serving cultural exchange and bringing together outstanding individuals from different countries and backgrounds. Conflict and peace education or have the university days when we quit. However, in order to truly understand the Tufts European Center today, we must first understand the spirit and idealism of its founders. Donald McJanet's father was a strict evangelist minister whose meager salary forced Donald to work as a child. When he was 15, Donald and his sister were orphaned. Donald became the foster child of a Medford, Massachusetts couple while his sister was placed with a family in another state. Proximity may have led to his attending Tufts University, where Donald was inspired by the positive impact of good teaching on young people's lives. Teaching in the schools or international camps he founded, Donald always strove to create a sense of family among his students. Dr. Carmichael gave my husband two months of a holiday so we could work it out. Orphans and we had them in camp. So, you know, I have, when people ask me, how many children have you had? I say 3,000. <laughs> in 1916, McJanet graduated from Tufts with a degree in languages and an insatiable desire to teach. He began teaching at the St. Albans School in Washington, D.C and, after serving as a World War I aviator, he went on to study at the Sorbonne in Paris. In 1924, at saint Cloud near Paris, he founded his first school, the Elms, later known as the McJanet Country School. The following year, Donald opened a summer camp at Angon on Lake Annecy in Tauroir. Here, he offered a total learning experience through sports and the arts. McJanet believed in nurturing the whole child, respecting and fostering individuality and the rewards of discipline. Seeking these virtues, he cultivated both the students' minds and bodies in this stunning location. Initially, the camp consisted of just tents. Soon, however, McJanet and the camp counselors built permanent structures, which are still used in retreats today. Donald McJanet not only taught the value of hard work and achievement, he lived this philosophy. In 1932, Donald met Charlotte Blensdorf, a renowned music and eurythmics teacher. They married later that year. Nineteen thirty-nine brought World War II, shattering the McJanet's work at their French schools. Nazis closed the school at Saint Cloud, and the war stopped work at their second school near Cannes. In the fall of that year, they held classes at the camp in Talwar, but by 1940, that too was closed. He gave the camp to the Quakers because there were so many children uh, dead on the roads when they were fly fleeing from, uh, for, uh, from Paris. They came in this direction because wars start and wars finish, and we will be in good health and mental shape. In 
In the early 1940s, Donald and Charlotte taught as part of the war effort in Washington, D.C. After the war, the plight of war orphans led Donald and Charlotte back to France where they helped restore the children's mental and physical health. Upon their return in 1945, they found their camp gutted by the Nazis and immediately began restoration. This footage, and all the other war footage you have seen, is from Donald McJanet's film, France Rebuilds. McJanet was the first American civilian allowed to return to France and the first allowed to film the war's devastation. This film was distributed throughout the United States, raising money and support for France's restoration. In 1946, the McJanets reopened the camp, helping French children recover from the war. Far from the devastation of their native towns, the children found a place of beauty and peace a place where they could once again be children, regain their heritage, and rediscover themselves. The camp continued to serve children long after the war years. Each summer, campers representing as many as 17 countries would attend, including such notables as Indira Gandhi. For many years, the camp was staffed by Tufts University student volunteers shown here greeting campers. The purpose was always international understanding. Daily camp life included athletics, music, art, and necessary chores. Each child was encouraged to find a pleasure in perfecting a discipline. Today, the camp and the priory make up the Tufts University European Center. My husband founded the first international summer camp, a few um, meters really from the Priory, at Angon, a village near Talois. And uh, there we worked with children and young people from all over the world for 40 years. Then he tried, wanted to retire when he was 70 years old. But I said to myself, what is this active man going to do when he, he, he won't know how to retire? And at that time, this house, this uh, beautiful priory, uh, was in very bad shape. But it had a glorious large hall, which at that time was cut in two by a wall. But in any case, I saw and we saw the opportunity that if we could manage by putting our own hands and our own minds to it, that we could then create a center where people would meet very soon we realized that there was a certain spirit about this house that has come down from the Middle Ages. There was peace and there was beauty. And people who came felt that here we can be ourselves and here we can be friends with other people. So, slowly but surely, the idea grew that we should have a cultural, cultural center. In the 1960s, international groups began holding conferences at the Priory. The YMCA, the Center for Psychological and Religious Studies, and the World Health Organization were among the first. Today, these dialogues continue. It's not easy teaching young people about this novel, because to them it's ancient history. They don't know that Gdansk used to be Danzig. Most of you do, because you have... In 1966, the Priory hosted its first Entretien de Taloir, three days of lecture and debate on the topic, What is Man? The second Entretien brought together 150 international scholars and thinkers to discuss vital relations of man. Today, scholars and students continue exploring history, philosophy, and ethics. And the reason he was so successful, does anybody know why he was so successful? Anyone? Uh, he used a new weapon. In 1979, Donald and Charlotte McJanet donated the Priory to Tufts University, establishing the Tufts European Center. Inspired by the McJanet's lifetime dedication, thousands of students and international leaders have come here seeking answers to questions facing modern civilization.
relevant to the issue only if the right in question is a moral right and not merely a, a legal right. But that hasn't been proved. That hasn't even been argued. Universities, we like to believe that universities are always associated with all the good things of life, education, health, uh, development. But I think it's a fair statement to also recognize that the military means of mass destructions, destruction by and large originated in universities. We have a responsibility to find means of conflict resolution other than uh, a war. Perhaps it was most fitting when in 1992, the Priory hosted US athletes participating in the Winter Olympics, a symbol of international cooperation and the lesson of sports Donald McJanet lived by. Here's how Sports Channel TNT covered it. All right, thank you, Fred and Nick, and we are back outside Albertville in the lakeside village of Talwa, where the United States Olympic Committee has set up its headquarters. At one time or another, all the U.S. athletes who are here will have passed through the stately grounds of the Tufts University European Center. One visit to this 11th century Benedictine monastery and you get a distinct sense of history. We're told that a thousand years ago, give or take a few decades, monks would walk the same paths traced this day by speed skater Bonnie Blair and teammates. The monks would come here to get their robes. American athletes have come here to get their sweats. For the U.S., there is reason to smile as the games approach. And when the road to Albertville continues... Like the Olympic teams, the Tufts European Center continues to foster international cooperation through athletics, staging its own annual games in the McJanet tradition. Students come here to study the world, but also to learn more about themselves. Education. In the Latin used by the Benedictine monks a millennium ago, it meant to lead forward through enlightenment, to lead the world toward peace, to lead cultures toward greater mutual understanding, to bring out the potential of each individual. Today, the Tufts European Center continues this universal and timeless mission, carrying on the life's work of Donald and Charlotte McJanet. It continues bringing future generations closer to a spiritual rebirth that will unite the world in a single vision.